Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video, I'll be taking you guys through every step it takes to get this black Range Rover Sport painted through prep to prime and paint. So it's Santorini Black Metallic is the colour name and paint code's 820. So I started off, just gave that section there a quick block back. There was a bit of damage there. And I'm just taking, them, taking my time to make sure I get that filler in really nice and fine. Don't want too much in there, but I still need enough in there to fill up the damage. So I put the heat lights on it for a good five minutes. Just being careful I didn't put it too close because you can start melting uh, plastic parts. And then you saw me there with the high pressure air cooling it back down because it'll, that will snap it. And uh, if you start sanding it when it's still a bit uh, hot, it'll still be a touch rubbery. So you want to cool it right down before you start sanding it. And I'm using 180 grit here with that stick it soft block there. Um, I've found uh, they're, they're great. These are great blocks. They uh, they do have a bit of flex in them, but they they just get into good angles and they mold to the curves that you need them. So next up, I went over it with a bit of 320 there, and uh, that 320 should uh, get rid of most of those 180 grit scratches. Uh, there's probably going to be a couple of deeper ones left, which I then put a piece of 400 on. Um, there was a few other just small scratches uh, through the center of this tailgate, which is um, I was just giving them a quick sand down here just to make sure they did come out and make sure I didn't have to prime them. So it turned out I was happy with how they sanded out with 400, and I didn't. Uh, I decided I didn't need to prime that section of the tailgate. I'm just going to prime over uh, that section where we've got the filler there. So next up, just giving it a nice blow off. Um, and the next stage I'll be just giving it a bit of a uh, light scotch bright just around the, the edges. Uh, it turned out there was just a bit of grey sitting there so I grabbed grey scotch bright. You could use red or green scotch bright, it's up to you. Grey is fine for the job though. Grey is generally more used for uh, paint work rather than priming but uh, I found it did the job this time. Just using a bit of a false edge masking there, so I'm not going to get a big thick hard edge. Uh, so I just flip that leading edge of the tape over on my knee, and I then mask the entire car off, put some plastic over it, and it is pretty important that you use paper when you're using these heat lights, which is how I'm using. Um, so if you don't use plastic, uh, sorry, if you don't use paper and you go straight over with plastic and use the heat lights, the heat can get a bit too much for the plastic and it actually start melting it to the car. So um, yeah, the paper is a better insulator of the heat. So as you saw there, I'm um, using the uh, Air Gunther AZ-3 Primer Gun 1.8mm uh, tip on it. It's a really nice gun, this one, at a reasonable price. Um, and you see your arm, uh, basically from your elbow to the tips of your fingers, you don't want it any closer than that. You're better off going a touch further away. That's why I was uh, sort of putting my arm in between there, just to show you guys the distances. Um, two coats probably would have been enough for this because I was really happy with the um, the way that uh, that repaired up. Um, I just decided to just put an extra one on there that um, just so it gives me a little bit more material on there to block down. So I just gave it another flash for about five minutes, flash off cycle on those heat lights, and again I'm cooling that down. So you notice I'm blowing the air on there for a couple of minutes actually cooling that down before I put this next coat of primer on. That's actually quite an important step. When I first started using these heat lights, um, we st I've, I've seen all kinds of stuff done with it and I've done it myself. I've melted uh, tail lights, I've boiled primer, I've blistered paint, all that kind of stuff. So all the stuff that I tell you guys, I do uh, tell you for a reason. And if you own your own garage, then uh, it's going to save you a few dollars by uh, listening to some of the stuff I have to say. Um, so we're also doing this upper tailgate section here on this job too. So while I've got, well, once I've got that last coat of primer on there, I've got that drying uh, uh, under those heat lights again. I've come up, got this section here, I'm prepping that up, and I also sorted out the color while I was waiting for that to dry. Come back yet again, let it cool down before I start sanding it, or else it might be still a bit rubbery. Um, I baked that for about 45 minutes and then I've come back and I was just using 320 there 
just a piece of 320 on that same soft block and I was pretty happy with how it came up. The, uh, it's nice and smooth, nice and flat, there's no real ripples there. So straight on, I was just checking, I've got a piece of 400 on there, that should uh, remove those 320 grit. Nice. Uh, sorry, actually, I used 600, that's right, yeah. I went straight over, because I only blocked it with 320, uh, I went straight over to uh, 600 grit there. And what I'm doing here, uh, I'm just getting the air blower and making sure it gets a nice blow off. Get, give that sandpaper a good blow down too, because that uh, sandpaper is carrying a bit of that primer dust. And I don't want to drag that primer dust through to my blend area over this side of the tailgate. Um, yeah. That's something that you've got to be careful of when you're dry sanding. When you're wet sanding, it's not such an issue. Uh, another thing, uh, I always used to prep jobs by starting off doing it dry, doing this method here, and then would finish it off with um, a Scotch, Scotch Bright and the Scotch Bright paste and stuff like that. It gets messy though. You, you get water and slides and stuff all over that the, the lower section of the tailgate, and it's just. Uh, it's more time consuming, you've got to uh, clean up um, all that sludge and you've got to dry the whole car down. It takes a good five minutes just to clean the car down um, after using the wet sanding, but you've just got to make sure. Um, so the water would, uh, if I was using water, that would pull the uh, any of that white dust out of that blend area, but we're not doing uh, wet sanding, so that's where you've just got to be uh, a bit more fastidious about the cleanliness of how you sand the panel down. So. If you do one step, no matter what it is, you do that step, you then blow yourself off, blow your hands off, blow the piece of sandpaper off that you're using. And you really just got to be very careful not to get any of that primer dust on your blend area. And if you do, just make sure you clean it off. And yeah, that's just from trial and error because um, I sort of made this uh, dry sanding method myself just through trial and error and I've found this way works really quite the best. So I'm using here is just 800 grit softback sanding sponge and I've found that a really nice way of prepping your blends up because it actually removes the orange peel, not like, whereas if you use Scotch Bright, that sort of goes over the top and you're not actually sort of flattening it down and starting again. Um, so you, your fresh paint's gonna sort of take take on the old orange peel if you just scotch bright it, yet this is actually taking it back down and I can start a game with my orange peel and replicate the orange peel a bit better, uh, I've found anyway. So, yeah, obviously just taking notice also that I'm using the masking tape around all those edges so I'm not hitting them and um, there's a bit of a rubber on that rear windscreen so I actually used that um, blue uh, fine line masking tape to lift that rubber up and I was actually able to sand up under there I then peeled it off and redid it because that uh, original tape was just covered in dust and stuff like that. So I pulled it off and um, wiped the whole job down, blew it off, and now it's in the booth and we're giving it a bit of a mask up. So yeah, just using 36mm uh, masking tape here, I've found it's uh, one of the most, uh, just the easiest to work with. Some people use 2 inch and uh, just it's, I just find it a bit thicker. and. I do some work on aeroplanes on, on the weekend and we just got some uh, projects that come up and for aeroplanes and industrial type stuff, yep, two inches is great because you're masking up big stuff and uh, the the tape just might not stick but I just found the 36mm, uh, um, this masking tape, just better for an a, a automotive environment. Um, yeah, so just going around making sure that rubber's uh, peeled up so we're not, it's not actually sitting down and touching the painted area. Um, yeah, just and for the rest of it, just back masking those two edges and just a piece of three quarter inch for the rest of the lower section there because there's a bit of a gap there for my paint to run into. Just making sure that that razor blade and uh, pushing it in there. And once that's all done, I've then uh, just got the plastic and covered the entire car. So you see here, um, when I'm painting uh, in the in the oven, and I'm not using those infrared lights. It's fine to just go straight over with the plastic, and not you don't have to use the paper. I find this is just a quicker way of getting the job done. With uh, pretty high flow of work at the workshop I work at, we probably do from 30 to 35 cars a week, depending, and. Uh, of that, I'd probably do anywhere between three and five cars, paint three and five cars a day. So anywhere I can uh, try and 
save a bit of time up adds to earlier I get earlier I get to go home every night so and it makes a boss a couple of dollars too which is always a good thing so just going around putting putting our tape down on the edges making sure there's no little gaps nooks and crannies to uh, have paint fly through and get overspray although there are some pretty good um, products on the market these days we've got the overspray clay bars which um, they can wash the car down with if, if you do get like a fine mist so talk to your um, paint supplier and stuff like that if you, if you do find you get just a fine mist of overspray on the, the car that you painted then um, it's worth getting them and say because we used to back in the day just have to if we got overspray on a car it was a big job to get off we used to have to get the buff out cut and polish and it, it takes hours but these days bang just a bit of that a uh, bit of soap on one of these clay bars and it comes straight off You've also sort of got these little hand washing pads and just use it when you wash the car and it brings all that grime and overspray straight off. So um, Technology has came quite a way since uh, I've started in this trade, since year 2000. So just some great little products that have been introduced to help, help us and even just stuff like you've seen, the prep work. Um, this job from start to finish would have taken me probably about two, two and a half hours, two hours, something like that. So pretty good turnaround on a job like that. Um, so yeah, I'm just using uh, wax and grease remover here with those uh, degreasing cloths there. Um, just, uh, yeah, uh, silicone remover. Um, just making sure I get right up underneath that uh, that rubber that was sitting there. I don't want any bits of dust flying out of there when I'm actually spraying. So the liquid uh, from this wax and grease remover should pull the last pieces of dust uh, that were inside the, the grooves from where I sanded so um, we should be able to get a clean job and uh, I've sometimes I've done wax and grease removing prior to masking and then wax and grease removed again after masking and I found there's no need to do it prior to masking. I just give it a bit of a wipe down, just with a rag maybe, and wipe the edges down before you mask. There's no need to actually give it a wax and grease. I mean, it's just an extra step, as I say, something that you can save you a couple of minutes. And uh, here we go, we're starting to get some colour on here. I'm using the Devilbus GTI Pro with the T2 air cup on it. And um, just settings on that. I have the fan wound right open, have that fluid needle just about wound right out so I can get as much as much fluid on as I can with the base coat and just set the pressure with the T2 to about 25 PSI, give or take. Uh, you've got a pretty safe working range with this uh, T2 air cap between around probably 18 to 29 PSI. You wouldn't want to go much below because it'll just start dropping on like big, big droplets and much higher and it's just going to go on um, quite fine and it's just going to end up in the spray booth filter so you're just going to be wasting too much. Um, as you can see there, it ended up getting a bit of a sort of a static reaction because I wiped that wax and grease remover over it. So um, it turned out it didn't turn into much dust when I finished clearing it but sometimes you guys might see me and doing these pre-primed factory parts and I just prep them up and tack rag them down and paint straight over it and that's why because the wax and grease remover can sometimes actually create uh, static on those parts. Yet I don't want to go and use some of those plastic cleaners because they're not bare plastic. Um, yeah, they've, they've actually got um, in the auto aircraft industry I was mentioning before. Um, when we paint the composite parts, they've actually got a a paint. It's a primer and it's actually an anti-static uh, primer that we have to paint over all those uh, compass fiberglass composite parts to remove all the static from it and then we have to prime over the top of it so here we go you see I didn't actually cut any time out out there in between coats it really does dry nice and quick this solvent base which I'm using solvent based base coat uh, and, and the blacks covered really well so that was just a quick sake of bang bang two coats job done straight out get your clear on the go and come in and get your clear coat on so um, yeah, it's really uh, quite quick application using the solvent base. I think using the water base it slows it down a little bit, uh, but water base basically um, 
it runs more on airflow rather than uh, heat with the solvent base. Solvent base needs the heat more to help it dry. And on this day it was uh, around 25 to 30 degrees. Beautiful Perth day. Just checking over the job, making sure I'm happy with it. Okay, now it's looking pretty nice, so I decided to use my uh, clear coat straight over it. Um, so you notice when I was originally tack clothing it, I used the um, yellow tack cloth. It's a high tack tack cloth, so it's a pre-paint tack cloth. And then that blue one there, that's a, um, uh, a, a tack cloth that you use on your base coat. So, uh, Pro Light with their TE10 is the air cap I'm using. A couple of guys have noticed that a lot of my videos, I'll just use the TE20 air cap, and a couple of guys said, hey man, do you want to use uh, the TE10? And they'd like to see what I think of this air cap and just get some settings and stuff like that. So, I found the TE10, it's got really small holes in it where the air comes out on the air cap itself. So, basically, it needs less air to run this uh, spray gun. So the safe working range I've found is about 18 to 22 PSI on the regulator. Set your regulator to 18 to 22. Um, drop it down to maybe 18 if you want to get a finish like this, which is a nice thick sort of European peel. Nice uh, wet finish. If you're going for the more Japanese uh, style thin like Mazda type um, orange peel, maybe even go up to the 22 PSI and even adjust your uh, fluid settings too. So this kind of car, I'll probably have it wound right out to about three and a half turns out. So wind that fluid right in, three and a half turns out. Um, whereas one of the Japanese type cars or the Mazdas, something like that, you'd um, just go in like two and a half turns out and, and go a little bit faster on your passes. So I still like to hold the gun nice and close, no matter which uh, T10, T20. And it really does, um, it's it's a pretty good all-round air cap, uh, great for the hobbyist. I'd definitely recommend this to, to sort of the DIYers that have just got limited air supply, don't have the um, highest, the best uh, horsepower on their compressor, um, because yeah, it's got the small holes, it, it's, and it's, it is um, a bit of an all-rounder uh, air cap. Obviously, you can spray your base coat and spray your VAC, your single stages and your clear coats and everything. I find it works better with clear coat. Um, I use it a few times on base coats and single stages. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I find it doesn't get enough material out um, because it's such a fine atomization on it. Um, but it really does replicate those Japanese peels quite easily. It's, it's pretty efficient, but if you're looking for getting really nice results, I've found it can be actually quite thirsty. So. If you get that pressure up a touch, so you, you want to get it up to say 22 psi, you run it at that. It's it's actually going to use quite a bit of paint. Um, yeah, if you if you go sort of for if you're doing your own car or you're doing a respray and you're doing like uh, you want to get a real nice sort of show type finish on it, you you're going to use a lot of paint with this air cap. You're going to use more than the T20 and definitely more than the HP30. So. That's just about bringing this job up to an end. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. And um, yeah, we'll just have a quick look at the car out the front. It's a totally gangster car, this thing. I'll tell you what, and that's the main reason I thought I'd make a video of this. Also a good um, sort of video for you guys. It takes you through every single step. But um, you wait till you see this car out the front. Um, took a nice, nice long video of it. Longer than I usually do for the endings, just because it's such a nice car. The colour blended out, as you see, I only blended that colour, each one of those end, uh, end pot spots. There's no colour up there, however my colour was good enough, I actually just about could have bought it the whole way up had I wanted to, but there's no need to. So here you go, this is a Range Rover Sport. Just one of those cars, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, yeah, one day I'd like to own one of them. So yeah, hang around for uh, for another minute. We'll just give you a good look at this car first, and then after that, we've got just a couple of links that you can click on. Um, you can either view the channel, which I've got some uh, playlists there, 
And I also got the Pro Light for clear coat with the TE20, which is the other air cup that I use on this on that gun you saw me clearing with. And also we've got the NS Iwata Supernova review and demo. So thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production.